So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Dominic to talk about Static Backend, a Go-based open source project that he's been working on. And uh, take it away, Dominic. Thanks. 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 So I will share my screen first. Um, so like uh, Jim said, please bear with me. Uh, so I do have a visual disability. So uh, if you see myself uh, running the mouse all over all over the place, that's normal. Um, so yeah, let me open my slide, and they they will you know they are just uh, Visual Studio Markdown file. All right. So yeah, I will I will not take too much uh, presenting myself. I think it was uh, done greatly. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to do since the last 10 years, I'm trying to, uh, well, maybe 15 now, trying to build a software as a service. So the idea of recurring revenue to me is extremely sexy. And it is something uh, I will never stop trying. Um, I wrote I wrote a book on that, and uh, Static Backend was born in uh, 2019, where I was kind of extremely bored of rewriting the same, uh, you know, the same backend uh, concept or small pieces. Let let you know think about uh, user management and uh, you know just database uh, crud in general. Um, so I thought to myself, well, there is there's Firebase. There there is a lot of backend as a service that exists, but uh, there, you know, I I had a huge difficulties with the uh, the vendor locked in aspect of it. So I I I told myself, well, I like to build SaaS, and I do have a need to boot. I, I wanted something very quick to bootstrap new idea. So static backend was born, and uh, it was a closed source product at this uh, at the beginning. Very very difficult to to have any kind of traction. Even 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 now, I would say uh, it, it it's open source, and it is it is extremely difficult um, to have you know decent uh, traction and whatnot. So there there is lots of competition in that field, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think there is uh, I. I, I this product could carve a, its place uh, because it's kind of different. So what I will be talking today is uh, we, will, we will see what it is. What, what exactly can we build with, with that thing? What, what exactly are we talking about when we talk about the backend as a service? And uh, also I have prepared two uh, two, two quick demo, uh, frankly, that are uh, just just to showcase what what is possible. So, yeah, one uh, one is similar to Airtable. Airtable is a software as a service kind of a imagine an Excel on steroid, if you will. So uh, that would be uh, a small uh, a small version of that and uh, a WebSocket uh, tic tac toe game. So that's. Uh, that's mainly what we will be doing, and I need to close the slide. I don't have a way to uh, to change that uh, easily. Um, so yeah, so what is static backend? Well, yeah, it's it's an open source uh, backend as a service. So like I was saying, I was extremely bored uh, of writing the same functionalities on the backend over and over, and I'm not well. I am kind of a full stack developer, if you will, but I pretty much prefer to uh, to be in the back end. Uh, that being said, it's extremely repetitive what you need to uh, to write, especially in, in a software as a service kind of application uh, that I never wanted to write a user, you know, a forget password uh, flow again. So I thought to myself, well, it's uh, it's something. So it, it grew to what what we have on this uh, on this window at this moment. So we are talking about user management. So what that means, login and register, for example. Uh, let, let's go simply as that, and we will expand that uh, further. Um, so it offers you a fully database. So just like Firebase is is offering you a document database, so static backend offers offers a document database as well, but 
it's a little bit easier to query the data. So one aspect of Firebase that is uh, difficult or maybe not as straightforward as what it could be is, is the, the querying of the data. Uh, so I, I think I, uh, I have a better solution for that with static backend. Um, file storage, of course. So all application needs file storage. We are talking about uploading images, let's say, your users want to upload their avatar or i don't know logos for their uh, for their specific use case in your application so it's all handled uh, you know directly with a a cdn to serve the file later um, so yeah, so it's uh, it, it's it's basically building blocks. So you get a lots of uh, building blocks, like the WebSocket that we are seeing here. It's it, it is a channel bear, uh, channel based real time communication. So what what I mean by that is uh, Elixir is is a good example of a. a properly designed channel based communication if anyone has uh, any you know know about that but basically what it is is your websocket connection are grouped together so imagine let's take a to-do list for example so we could have a team of people working on a project and they could uh, they could have a chat let's let's say they could have a chat uh, in their in their screen where where, uh, where they are seeing their project and uh, the, the channel based aspects mean that only you know only this team would see uh, the messages that uh, that are sent in there there is also server side functions so server side function are kind of similar to what function as a service is in lots of cloud provider uh, but they are they are a little bit different because basically at the end of the day it's only a JavaScript runtime that uh, you know runs on the server, and well, yeah, you 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 write the function in uh, in JavaScript. So uh, so for example, there is lots of built-in uh, built-in uh, function in in that runtime. Uh, for example, to access your data, we, we will see that. Uh, well, no, I don't. I don't really have anything on that uh, on this on this talk, but. Uh, the website documentation is uh, is there for that, and uh, you know sh schedule tasks. So let, let, let's uh, let's uh, pass this slide uh, quickly. So caching and send email. So like I was saying, it's it's mainly building blocks for common use case of a typical web and mobile application. Um, so let's. Next thing. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. So it's it's mostly um, it's mostly. Well, how can I say that? <laughs> I'm I'm building SaaS, so of course uh, we can see that as the product continue to evolve, uh, there will be probably a direction taken. To uh, to satisfy you know the need of software uh, software as a service application, but uh, but it's it's not only that. Um, so you can think of static backend as being able to uh, you know to perform all all of those tasks from the cl uh, the client side and the server side as well. Uh, so what that means is, well, we are in a Gemstack. <laughs> Meetup. So I would guess that lots of you have client side or ser uh, server side rendered page and whatnot. So if you want to build uh, a single page application or any kind of web, uh, you know, web application, typically with uh, React or Vue or Helm, for example, uh, well, it's it's possible to use the the JavaScript library. Client, from the client side. So basically, you have most of the functionalities straight from, from uh, your application itself. Why I say most? Because, of course, there is some aspect uh, regarding the security uh, that cannot be performed on the client side. Uh, sending email, for example, is, is a good one. Um, so for that, we have 
some uh, client side libraries. And for now, those are the languages that are supported. So you can imagine that stat static backend sits between uh, the the real data, the database, and your your user that that are using your application, and it it would technically be able to uh, to accomplish uh, accomplish anything that you would need to do uh, from from your application point of view. Uh, so let's hopefully this is a good enough description. Let's let's uh, enter into the. Uh, the authentication, and from here we will uh, we will go back and forth uh, from a little bit of uh, live coding and uh, and the slide itself. So the first the first building block of most application is is uh, you know authenticating the user. So this is this is mostly where everything starts, and static backend kind of requires. A, you know, the user to be authenticated to do anything. So that they, they, they cannot really do anything unless they have a, an active token and whatnot. So there is only two simple functions for that, register and login. And uh, basically they are returning a, a token. So each, uh, each uh, functionality that, that uh, is uh, offered by static backend needs a, an act, an active token like I was saying, so uh, so yeah so you are starting from there, and uh, let's see let's see how we can uh, we can how we can play with that. So in here, um, I'm not sure if my uh, my font is big enough. It, it looks pretty good. If you can go one size bigger, that's fine. But I think it's it's generally okay. Uh, what is the shortcut? So do, 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 control equal something like that. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's probably good. Um, okay. So basically, we are actually in a in Node application. So the reason I choose Node for the live coding it it, it is because it will be it will be quicker to go in here and just execute the code without a browser. So it's it's easier for me at least. But uh, we are not using anything in here that the client side library cannot do. So so we, 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 just, we just have a starting point in here. And from here, uh, yeah, we can, we can see that I've imported the, uh, the static backend node application. So in, in a JavaScript application, the library is uh, is JS instead of backend, but they have almost the same uh, uh, they, they have almost the same uh, functionalities exposed. So I just realized that I I kind of skipped a lot of things that I wanted to talk about. Um, let's back off a little bit. So what is that thing in here? Well. Uh, at this moment, I don't have static backend running on on this machine. So because I wanted to prepare a little bit, and I was not, uh, I was not. Uh, I thought my talk was was, was at uh, six thirty. So <laughs> let me give me a couple of seconds. So basically, uh, there is a way to to run a static backend in a self hosted environment. So what that means. Uh, there's there's three main way to run to run it on on your machine. You can use it via Docker. You can compile the application itself and run it and run it directly, um, or you can run binaries. I would, I would I would place the binaries in between those. So Docker is by far the easiest because you have all the dependencies and you know every, everything. That static backend needs is is going to run, and those two options. Well, you you kind of have to uh, to satisfy the dependencies. The dependencies are, are not huge. We are talking about MongoDB and Redis, but uh, but still. <clears throat> so I will I will run the application uh, myself by compiling it because uh, I, I have lots of production uh, things going on and. Uh, but I, 
that's not the best way to, to run it from a user point of view. So I, I would run it uh, via the Docker uh, thing if you can. But uh, but yeah, the, the documentation is uh, is probably way more clearer than, than what I'm trying to say at the, at the moment. Uh, suffice to say that once we have a the, the server, so the, the static backend server running on, on the development machine, we can now start talking to the backend. And for that, we need a public key. So this public key, well, how, how did I obtain it? Well, there's, there's a UI actually. So let me, can I open that? There, there's a UI, uh, whoops, the, the, the static backend run on the 8099 port. So we could, we could create a, an account in here and, uh, and, and, and we, we would, we would get this thing uh, in here. So in fact, let me open, um, when you create an, an, an account, you kind of receive a, an email and, uh, you, you basically have all the information that you need from that email. Okay. So let's uh, let, let's let's start from here. So we have a an instance of static backend running on our machine. We have a public key that satisfy you know the usage. We we as a as the developer need need that to start using it. So the dev here just mean that we are looking uh, we are running that locally. Uh, if we were to go to production, we could do NA1 in here. So that's the, the, the paid hosting that, 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 that I'm providing. Or you can, you, you know, you could have your own instance in here. So let's say, I don't know, let's say you are hosting that on a domain like yourcompany.com in here, whatever. So you, you would just need to do that for going to production. Um, so let's tr let's let's start by registering an account. So we will call the backend dot register, and we will you know we'll pass like a there. There's not much uh, requirement in here. There, there's no password required. So the, you know all all the you know if you, if you need password requirements. So this this is the responsibility of the of the application. So stat static backend. The, does not have anything at all. Uh, how can I say that? Oh yes, yeah. It will be difficult for me to talk in English and, uh, and code at the same time. Static backend does not have any any opinion at all. So you you are responsible for you know for. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so tired. Uh, you are responsible for anything anything that you want to do. So basically, when we call any any function of static backend, uh, well, they they are all promises. So, well, I, I, I won't go into too much detail, but this is a, a classic async await uh, model. But they, they are all returning uh, the same thing. So, you can, you can imagine that any uh, any call will return an OK, which is a boolean. Uh, let's have that uh, defined in here. And and a content which is anything. So if, if there is any TypeScript, uh, so this is this uh, this would be how how it, how it is defined. So uh, you know, ninety nine uh, percent of, of all the call to static backend will look like this. So you check for your error, and and yes, this is uh, this is probably go ish if, if you if you will, but. I really find this this approach to uh, to work uh, to work great. It forces you to to uh, to handle handle the error when when it happens. So, in the case that it's not okay, then the content will just be will just be an, uh, a string. So uh, so that's it. And and otherwise, then we will have a token in here. So let's uh, let's print the rest that the that content, and that would be our user token. So that token would be uh, required for all subsequent call. Uh, so I, I won't do any any other call at this moment, but uh, but let's just let's just run that thing. Uh, 
So yeah, so this is this is a, a JWT standard token with, with an expiration and whatnot. So um, so this is mainly how you would you would do uh, a registration and. You know, for for the login, well, they they have they have the same uh, the, the two function have the same uh, the same parameters, so we we could call that directly here, and, and it would would work as is. So we are we are getting our uh, token. So from there, this this is this is mostly the first step of all application. So from here, we could start playing with the database. Um, so the database is a, is a document database, a collection. You know, you have collection and you have documents inside of those collections. So it's very similar to, well, it's MongoDB on, on uh, you know, at the end. So uh, there's not much uh, to be, uh, let, me, let me remove that. There, uh, there's not much to be said other than that. So. Uh, the main aspect of, you know, what static backend will help you do is structure your data in a, well, I want to, to be careful with my, uh, with my word because we are, we are recording at the moment, but let's say, let's say it, it is trying to help you build a good practice, a good, a good architecture around uh, typical web application software uh, software as a service so one uh, one uh, typical errors that that people made well probably like longer than you know five seven seven years ago people were cre creating SaaS and they were creating just one uh, you know ju just one entity for their user so instead of creating a multi-user uh, architecture from the beginning, uh, most people were only creating, let's say, a user table with a email and password and, and other things. And after like one or two years, when when the product grows, you 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 kind of always need a account and user uh, relationship, if you will. So static backend already enforced that. Uh, every everything that is going to be created in the database will be tied to an account and the record itself the document itself will, will have an owner id so you can imagine that imagine that the the, the, the register that we called uh, just just previously on the code it created an account with the email and it, it also created a user inside that account so Everything that this uh, this user will create, uh, there will be an account ID attached to that. So this is important because it's it's already ready for you to have multi multi user uh, account, and the permission on those on those collection or tables or repository call call it what you want. They they are already. Uh, available for all, all the users inside one account by default. Um, so for those that knows the, uh, you know, the Linux and the, the Unix file system permission, uh, static backend use the same, the same way to, to give permission. So with, with the, uh, the, uh, the owner, the account and everyone else. So you have three, a digit basically, and uh, those makes uh, makes your permission for your uh, for your collection. This is important because sometimes you let's say let's say you are building a I don't know an invoicing application, and you want multiple users to be able to create uh, to create invoices for uh, for for customers. Um, so you want the user A to be able to see the invoices that the user B is creating, vice versa. So you want the read uh, permission for the the entire account. So th this is a huge topic. I don't I don't want to pass too much time uh, in here. I think the documentation is is kind of clear, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm very uh, open to feedback. So this is this is something that. Uh, 
you know, I think it's 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 good and flexible, but uh, it's just me, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Um, and uh, there is a way to have public collection as well. So those, I, I would I would say, you know, it needs to be extremely, you know, be careful with that because everyone would be able to read those collections. So what that means by everyone, I mean that anyone that that would be able to uh, to just go into their uh, you know their developer console, call call a function, and they they would they would be able to grab this data. But this data is supposed to be public anyway. So uh, so those special table uh, prefixing with the the pub underscore, they you know there's no there's no protection on them. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope it's clear. It's extremely difficult to explain because there is a lot of things in, in, in here. It seems simple, but uh, you know, permission and security is often uh, not not a priority. But Dominic, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, is, is there an interface that you'd be setting these permissions in, or, or are you going through and like actually programmatically setting these permissions? Like, how do you go about restricting content if you're an admin? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's when you are creating the uh, the table itself. So let me let me show you quickly. Sure. Um, so we are here, and we are here, and we are able to grab the the token that we grab that we got earlier. So let's say we want to create a. Yeah, let, let's continue with the a to-do list example, for example. Uh, let's have a, a task with uh, a name and uh, done, which is false. So this is where you would create, uh, not create, uh, excuse me, but uh, this is where you would set the permission. So let's have a collection called task. And if if you if you want if you would want to for example these these tasks to be only available for the person that created them, so that would be the way to to uh, to name the table. So it's it yeah by default if you if you are satisfied with the with the the, the default permission you don't need anything in there. But if you want the if you want to to configure specific permission then you would you would do an underscore and the, the, those three the owner permission the account permission and the everyone permission and that's how uh, you would you would do that so what I what I did so far because I I already built two two application with with static backend myself uh, of course I am not having those strings in here I I do have uh, you know a global you know, a global enumerator of, of tables somewhere. Well, not table, but uh, yeah, collection. And uh, because you you cannot expect developers. Let's say let's say you are two you are two developer working on it. You cannot expect to uh, to uh, to remember everything like that. So what I'm typically recommending is, you know, put those those names some, somewhere. And uh, and yeah, this is uh, this is how, how it's done. Hopefully that answers the questions. So let's see what we can do with with those database uh, before we return to the to the live coding. So we can we can create document into collection. So basically this is this is what we were looking at. So the collection is the name of the collection, and the, the document is the document itself. So you know, create, get by ID list. The query is interesting uh, because you have lots of flexibilities compared to something like Firebase, for example. Because uh, in Firebase and, uh, and data store and whatnot, you you have to think about your indexes and your your queries a long time uh, before because you need to to provision um, how they call that. I, I don't remember how they call that, but you need to, pro to to provide compound indexes or something like that to be able to have multiple uh, query parameters in your uh, in your uh, query. So let, let's continue with this invoicing example uh, that we we talked about. 
So let's say you want to filter your list of, of invoice for a specific clients. So in static backend, well, you, you don't need anything. You just you just pass a an array with the field name and the the operator and the value. And that's it. And you you can have multiple of those. The the only downside at this moment is that all of those criteria are, you know, they are separated with an end operator. So you cannot, at this moment, you cannot have one field or that field. So that that's not possible. Uh, but it's something that might might uh, might be there at some point. So you can see that this. This building block is probably the main uh, aspect of static backend. I would I would say because uh, an application without data is not very fun, and you you know you you cannot do uh, you cannot do much without data. So um, what I what I what I was thinking when I was designing the uh, the application was I. I, I did not want to to clutter the client side application. I, I I just wanted a normal API, if you will. Uh, I I did not want it to be too much verbose and whatnot. So I think uh, you know I think it's not bad. Uh, but yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, yeah, let's let's create let's create this task for example. Um, yeah. So the column, and now we pass the object itself. So let's call that the task column. Column, and um, we will capture this into a. Well, let, let's have this this create this create res, resource variable. So we'll check for error. Oh, I'm, I'm doing alerts. Well, it's it's simple. We are in a node application, of course. There's no alerts. Let's do a console error. All right. Oops. And. Uh, so let's just print out what 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 was inserted into the database. So the rest of content at this moment. So we just uh, it was rest, but uh, serious. Since we we call a create, so that that will be the entire uh, the entire object with its ID and the account ID and the owner ID. Uh, which the owner ID is not displayed for, uh, for instance, though. It's, uh, it's only on the server. Did I? What I did? Oh, I forgot to save. My bad. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, what is going on? Should the uh, should display the not understanding why I'm still seeing this token. Um, to, 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 to. See, res. You, you have res content? Is that supposed to be cres content in your console error? Yeah, it should. Uh, yeah, it in, should. Because uh, this is the, the object in here. So in that if statement, you have your console erroring res content. I'm not sure if that's even what oh, I see. Oh, yeah, that's good. Good catch. Thank you. So there's an error. Define. Interesting. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Those pesky await oh, async. I'm not used to do JavaScript, by the way. So 
Um, so yeah, so we can see that we have our account ID and our, uh, you know, the document uh, got its ID and whatnot. So from here, we could we could do a delete and update and anything like that on this. Um, so it's well, from my point of view, uh, I find it I found it a little bit less verbose than uh, than Firebase, for example. But but yeah, it, it's debatable, I guess. But uh, this is this is how we you know we would we would use static backend to uh, to operate on the data itself. Uh, and if we if we add another account and we were to uh, to read this, uh, you know, to do a, a list, for example. So by default, static backend is automatically filtering everything by the current account ID. So it's it's impossible for uh, one one account to see the content of the other, unless the permission allowed for it. So that's that's the the small the small thing to remember in here. Um, yeah, so I think uh, I think that was it for the database. So hopefully that that gives you a little bit of uh, an idea of, of what, uh, what what can be done with it. Uh, and yeah, before before we move to uh, before we move to the web socket, so let's let's have a look at a more complex or probably in the case of, uh, of this meetup, a more uh, targeted example, if I can say that. Um, the first application I've, I've, uh, I want to show, let's, uh, maybe let's, let me try it. Uh, I will uh, run it first to show you what it is. Um, And uh, and yeah, I, I I warn you the the UI is, I mean, it will be basic, but more than basic. Um, so what what we have here? Well, we have a way to register and sign in. So just like we just like we seen, um, and yeah, before before I do, well, let's do that first. Uh, but uh, let me. Um, let me show you exactly what uh, what we are talking about. So, I have this uh, simple simple application, which is this allow a user to create uh, tables and create their own schema, if you will, and fill the data in. So it's kind of similar to a extremely simplistic Airtable. Uh, you you can you can think of a an Excel file, but. Uh, Differently uh, displayed, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so we can, we can see the login and the the register function in here in action. So this is how one would use that in a React application, for example. Uh, so just like we were doing in in you know with the node uh, the node application, we we are calling the exact same function. So like I was saying, we are not using the backend. Uh, the 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 backend library and here we are in a client side application so this is the static backend GS application the library sorry and and uh, and yeah but it's the same so basically this this could be this could be a real example of how one would use uh, you know the register and the login functionalities uh, the rest I'm I'm not sure we will go into too much detail but this is a this is a a simple React application, I guess, uh, that just just try to <clears throat> to include the static backend in in itself. So we just we just logged in. Uh, we just see the login. So basically, the application wants uh, you know we we want to return the token uh, to to the main application. So when uh, when we initiate this React component, uh, we we pass a callback function that uh, you know allow us to grab this uh, this famous token. I, I will I will need to be careful with the time because uh, when, when I start talking, uh, I you know I so please uh, 
let me know if uh, if I'm uh, near uh, near the end. Um, so yeah, so so that's that's the authentication. So very very simple. So let, let's say uh, less than than one hundred line of codes for uh, for this, and this includes the database and whatnot. Uh, it's fairly it's very simple. This file is a little bit complex. So this file is exactly what we are uh, seeing here. Um, so what we can do? Well, we we can we could try to. Uh, we could we could try to uh, to create a uh, a database. Um, let let's start by creating a table. So uh, let's imagine we we have an application. We want to build an application, and this application uh, lets our user to create table. So for example, maybe they have a team uh, table, for instance, and um, their table uh, will have a couple of fields, like uh, employee, for example, maybe a, I don't know, a Slack name, what, whatever. I mean, I, it's not really important. So what we are doing in here, in fact, is, uh, you know, we are creating a, a schema for them automatically. And now they could edit the field, uh, let's say employee, and it's it's saving automatically on on the on the database, and you know to prove to you that it, it is saving, uh, let's create another table. Uh, like I was saying, the, the UI is, is like the worst. Uh, so now we can switch between two tables, and uh, yeah, the, the data is there. I. Um, so this code is available. I'm, I'm not sure we, you know, we have the time to go through all of this thing because I realize it will, it will take, uh, I mean, it will be incredible, uh, incredibly long. Um, <clears throat> but this is mostly what, uh, what a typical application could look like. Um, let's have a couple of, uh, let, let's see just a, couple of uh, functions, for example, that do call uh, the, the creation of the table. So yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, so I'm using TypeScript. So I, I defined earlier an, an interface for, for a table. And I'm just, you know, I'm just creating one in here and calling the create function of static backend. So it, it basically creates a table. Uh, Without any any kind of uh, schema at the moment, so I'm I'm using a an array directly to to store any kind of of data that they have and a uh, a an, an, another array for the field. So it's uh it's very it's very nice sometimes and to to use JavaScript. I will admit because it's so dynamic. And uh, yeah, I've been write, writing Go since uh, 2014 uh, daily, and sometimes I will admit that JavaScript is—I uh, don't have the word exact, but it, it's fun. It's fun to to program in JavaScript sometimes. Sometimes. Um, oh yeah. So so yeah. I, I I don't think I don't think we will go into too much de detail in here, but uh, but yeah, the, the code will be available for anyone that uh, if if anyone is curious. And whatnot, but uh, but yeah, <clears throat> this is uh, this is mostly uh, using the all all the CRUD operation that that we've seen uh, so far. So there is uh, there is the list uh, function as well. So when 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 this application uh, not that application, but when this component uh, start, then we are able to grab all the tables that this account. Uh, have have created so far, so uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's 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 mainly uh, it's mainly what we have seen quickly in the live coding, but uh, you know, in a more real world uh, application. Uh, so Dominic, is it? Is a typical workflow that you'd build your own UI for the database? So so like when I if I were to you know, install the the Docker containers to run static backend. Is there any UI like table builder thing that ships with it, or do you kind of program that yourself and then 
you build out your own schema through your own UI. Yeah, you 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 do that yourself. So it's it's extremely loose. Uh, there, there, yeah, you you can you can change the schema, and you don't have to run any any migration of any kind. Uh, that's that's the beauty uh, and, and the curse for some people of document database. Uh, so basically, the the schema will be will be in your application. There is a UI. There there is a UI uh, with static backend. That you can uh, explore the data, and uh, but it, it's very, it's very simple. Uh, so, so yeah, you 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 are responsible for creating the, the schema yourself, and uh, well, where I was going with that? Yeah, you you can change it. You can change it uh, at will as well. Um, so usually, usually, usually you you have it mostly in your application directly anyway. So let's let's continue with this uh, invoicing uh, uh, in in a better better architect uh, application. We we could we could have a a TypeScript file, for example, that that would that would uh, have all of those interfaces um, to properly define the the data structure that we want. So, uh, so that that would be one way to go. Uh, personally, if if I had to to do a client side application, um, I would do that. So yeah, yeah. The, I I don't think there is there is much to uh, to see here uh, that we we haven't covered into this slide anyway. I also just want to give you the time update. So about uh, ten more minutes. Wow, yeah, cool. Uh, let's switch to the next one. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so the real-time component, well, that, that one is, is, is very fun, to, to be honest. Uh, well, it's not that hard, to be frank, to, uh, to do WebSocket uh, application, but uh, it, it gets, I don't know, it, it gets dirty at some point. Um, so we are already signed in in here. I, I will try to quickly uh, showcase the uh, this thing here. Um, not remembering exactly. Enter your name. So let's say. So let's create a room. And now we will need another browser. With uh, yeah, this is a this is a a poor man. Tacto UI. I'm really sorry about the UI, but you know, it's it is what it is. Okay, so let's sign in uh, with another user. So that's another user. Uh, so now we should see. Yeah, we 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 uh, we see this uh, this room that I created. I will have this this name like Bob, whatever, and uh, let's join. So as soon as we join. And, and this is this is all working in uh, in uh, you know via WebSocket. So when I join, I don't know if you remember, but this was this was it was written uh, waiting for player. So every, everything that happened in here, if, if I open the uh, the console, uh, yeah, maybe I remember. Oh, there are, it might be it might be uh, short, but uh, everything that happened uh, be, uh, with the uh, the WebSocket is. Uh, um, sorry, I, I lost my my thoughts in here. Uh, so yeah, so it's my turn to play. So let let's do something. So now it's their turn. So let's not. Uh, we will not. We will not uh, see a match of tic tac toe. But uh, suffice to say that uh, it's very simple to build a connected application. So you you have you have only three function to remember. Connect will give you a callback to say, OK, this WebSocket is now authenticated. And this is the callback that, whoops, I did not want to do that. This is the callback that will be called when, when new messages arrive. Uh, the send function, well, you just send, uh, you, you just send data over, over a channel. And uh, that, that is mostly it. So let's just uh, let's just see this uh, this tic tac toe because it's uh, first of all it's like 
yeah, 300 line of code, but mostly uh, mostly React uh, ceremony and whatnot. Uh, let me show you where we are using it. So we are calling this connect uh, directly when uh, we uh, we click either the create room or the join room. Um, so we have uh, we, we we need to pass a callback to uh, to the authentication. So this is different than the static backend authentic uh, authentication, the login and register that we see at the beginning that we saw. Uh, we need to pass a token. So the WebSocket communication are authentication are, are authenticated with a real user. But there is a second authentication that needs to happen that, that just enable everything for this connection itself. So this is a good way as well to join a channel. So that 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 is what I was referring to when I say you know, this is China, a channel-based uh, communication. So we can send a join comment and, and we can just join a room. And the room is simply an ID from the database, but it could be anything. It could be, it's a string. So you can you can have multiple user join multiple channels and, uh, and they can exchange data from there. So the the un uh, the un authentication callback is a good way to to do that, and every time that we are going to receive a a message, then we we you know th this callback will be called, and uh, static backend have uh, predefined types that you can you can use like okay you know someone join a channel so that that was. What I was referring to when uh, when the waiting for opponent change to uh, to the two names and whatnot. Uh, so there there is there is a pre built types and uh, the generic one. So when when you send data and uh, the data is received, the the type is channel out. So channel out means this is. This is the application wanting to communicate over a channel to other user in that channel. So from there, what we typically do is you you have your own uh, data data uh, schema, if you will. So this is this is just JSON at the at the end, and this is this is yours. <clears throat> so this is where you would decide what to do with uh, with, uh, with with new. Uh, New messages that that your application send and and needs to do something when uh, when uh, when you receive it. So for me, uh, for this application, it was very simple. We needed a way to exchange name, and we needed a way to uh, you know to uh, to play a turn. So that that's that's mainly the the entire application in itself. So the the rest of this file is mostly. Uh, React handler and, and HTML rendering. So I, I hope I hope I it is I hope this is uh, it seems uh, how can I say that <laughs> I hope it seems to be easy to build connected application because this is another strength in my opinion uh, of static backend. So I I think the the real time component are extremely uh, extremely easy and the. There is a lot built uh, on that, so yeah, I think uh, I think that that is my last thing. So let me uh, let me try to uh, to uh, to be uh, precise in here. So what I'm trying to do um, at this moment is really trying to spread the word. Uh, it's very very difficult because there there is there is lots of good option in here. Firebase, of course. Uh, there is Superbase that is getting a lot of attention lately. Uh, I think static backend will differentiate itself in, in the upcoming months because I, I think I, I reached a, a place where the, the common building blocks of you know, usual web and mobile application are, are there. They are built, they are solid. I am building a SaaS on top of it called Tangera, actually. It's a mini Shopify. And, uh, and I'm using st uh, static backend uh, entirely, and this is this is just working. I think it's production ready, 
it's not a beta it's not an alpha it's 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 really it's really it's really there i think the the next step for me is is to go further with functionalities like like i'm listing in here so things like thumbnails uh things like uh i don't know you know pdf to html is is another functionalities that that you often use in uh in, in typical web applications so i think this is where static backend might uh differentiate from other things because you know firebase and and superbase seems to seems to focus only on the on the you know the the core pieces that i also have and uh and i think once i have lots of common still common functionalities uh it, it it becomes more than building blocks it becomes like a a web application kit or you know with with lots of uh functionalities that uh, hopefully are interesting to uh, to people so i think that's about it uh do i have uh yeah this is uh <clears throat> you know if you want to to tweet about it if you find it interesting i think the documentation is is gr is great uh well let's say good <laughs> and um yeah there there's a manage hosted uh, option as well so i like i was saying i'm using it uh, to build a SaaS myself it's in production and uh and yeah it's uh it's it's mostly it for me Awesome. Thanks so much, Dominic. That was really great. I can tell you've put a ton of work into this. Uh, I just want to open up the floor to questions. Do folks have questions for Dominic? I have, this, uh, uh, one, one question is, uh, like what, because you've built a lot of SaaS apps, you mentioned, yeah. what is like, the common pain points aside from the back end uh, that you usually run into when setting up SaaS apps? I would say finding customers that wants to pay for your application. It's probably, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, seriously, uh, in terms of front end, uh, I don't, I don't think there is a huge pain point typically, you know, typically related to SaaS yeah, that, that I've seen. I'm, I mostly build a single page application. In fact, I built my first single page application in 2011 when it was not even, you know, that, that terms did not exist at that, that time. Um, I, I think for SaaS, a single page is, is very, eh, yeah, it's, it's hard to say, but I, I think it's good most often than not. Uh, I, I would I would uh, I would say that the two last SaaS I've built, I was directly using a template from the server. So I kind of changed my mind a little bit. It depends, but it mainly have to do with me uh, not really liking to fight with the frankly the JavaScript tooling on on the front end. So that that's just me. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like to to you know to build a, a SaaS in two years. Uh, uh, your web pack does not work anymore, and now there, there's a huge bug to to fix in production. So this is something that uh, really kills me, to be frank. But uh, other than that, I, I've not seen anything uh, anything uh, difficult. Great, thank you. Sure. Um, I had a couple questions. Uh, so you mentioned some of the the competitors in the space. Obviously, Firebase, I think was one of the big ones um, to start there. There's There's been a couple other uh, like open source options like Superbase and, I, and another one called Enhost um, that have come out. And I'm curious, uh, when, I, when I take a look at those, it seems like there are a lot of different kind of services that they're pulling together that that um, might be challenging to, to host on, on your own. Because you're using Go and Go kind of goes down to a single binary, do you think that static backend is easier, easier in that regard or, or do you, do you still have to kind of pull services together? Because I know you're doing file storage, which I assume you're doing on some kind of block storage, whether that's S3 or um, spaces or, or whatever um, I was in prior. So, so what's your thoughts on that? Is it easier to host static backend versus a competitor solution? Uh, I think so. I, I will be completely frank. I haven't installed any of those. So I'm not, I cannot really tell if they are difficult or not to install. 
but yeah, this is true that the single binary of Go is is certainly uh, is certainly an easy one. This is something uh, I want to do in very short time. Have a one click install uh, install for Iroku and DigitalOcean. Uh, try to be on the marketplace if it's possible on uh, DigitalOcean. Um, yeah, I, I think so. I, I think you know it's it's still it still requires. Still requires to to man, maintain a server and, and whatnot. So that that's why I think uh, most of us uh, and host and uh, Superbase uh, have a a paid hosting with, with that because it's so easier to to just create your account and, and boom, that's it. You know, it's it, it's it's working. And, and do you think since you went kind of flat file storage, do you think it scales better than some of these other solutions that might use Postgres or something else on the on the back end? Or is that not really? Uh, yeah, this this is uh this is intriguing. So I, I always pick well always not not uh, Mongo for me is working. I, I use it uh, uh, with two of my SAS so far and I never have any problem with it. It depends. There there's a use case for for a document database. Of course, I would not build a bank on top of a document database, for example. You know, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to answer to that, but uh, but it clearly it, it it clearly is a an advantage. I think at this moment with me uh, with Go because I would not be able to have built it uh, in, in a relational database because because of the way Go is is uh, is typed and whatnot. So I, I cannot. I could not have dynamic. Uh, schema for the for the database so it, it was a requirement for me to have uh, mongodb but um yeah I'm, I'm not sure i think i think i i don't think it's an advantage but i i don't i don't think it's a huge disadvantage either that makes sense yeah is there any other questions I guess I'll just finish up with this this last question. This would be pretty simple, I think. Um, so since this is a Jamstack uh, meetup and a lot of the people on our group are thinking of only the front end, um, so things like uh, when you're you're um, first setting up the static back end, you, you have a public key there. Is that something that you can expose in your client or is that something that's sensitive? Yeah, it is. It's public. So yeah, there's, there's no danger with that. Yeah. Yeah, because because every everything is is authenticated after that with with the current user. So, so it's just it's just a way to identify your yourself, if you will. But yeah, it's it's public. No no danger there. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Dominic. This was great. Really appreciate thanks. you coming on and talking to the group. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, was nice. <laughs>